Hello and welcome back to another video. So, today we're going to do a Q&A, so time to relax and unwind a little bit. And today's questions are mainly going to be based off kind of game design-ish things, more in the sort of non-lore sphere of things, but it should be kind of interesting. Of course, as always, if you've got a question, whether it be lore, gameplay, or whatever, leave it down in the comments and I'll eventually get to it. Now, today's very first question comes from the Bumble Beast, and the Bumble Beast asked, what makes the Hunter class fun for me? Is it the rotation? Is it the spell visuals? Is it the numbers? What is it? And that's actually a very good question because the Hunter is a class that I've definitely seen a lot of criticism from throughout this expansion. And I think, you know, I, like, I don't think it's the most fun class in the game, honestly. And I'd say a lot of people who play the Hunter definitely think that. But the reason why the Hunter is really enjoyable to me, I think comes down to one thing. And that is that playing Hunter allows me to do stuff that I find really fun in raids. And one of the greatest things for me about the High Mall raiding experience was that as a Hunter, I always felt like I was running off to do something that helped the guild. So for an example, let's just go through the fights. Well, in Kargath, I kind of did nothing, you know, I stood behind the fire, but I suppose that was kind of easy because Hunters are very mobile. But in the Butcher, well, the people who are best equipped to deal with the Butcher's Cleave are the Hunters. And having that extra layer of responsibility really enhances the amount of enjoyment that I get from that fight because I feel like I'm doing something. And of course, like, I'm also, I suppose, in a lot of those cases, working in tandem with the other Hunter in my guild, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like you're a bit of a sub-team, and that really is a lot of fun. Uh, moving on to other fights, Bracken Spore? Come on, going around with the flamethrowers is just a lot of fun. Um, flamethrowers are great, and if you learn to manage the flamethrower buff, which I'm still not perfect at, you can really pull out some serious numbers, and uh, that's really enjoyable. Then, of course, in Korra, you've got um, a lot of stuff that you can do as a Hunter, and, you know, with, uh, with the little like, ball-catching thing, you know, you let the balls drop in your head, you absorb the balls, and yay, the balls don't kill your raid. And then, of course, with um, Imperator, Margok, if you're a hunter, you're the, you know, you're the people who are bouncing that debuff around the place. So it always just feels like there's a lot of stuff to do. Maybe a little bit less so in parts of Blackrock Foundry, from what I've experienced so far, but in general, it's a class that I think allows me to take on a little bit more responsibility. And the reason I think why I can take on that extra bit of responsibility as a hunter is because the current best performing spec, Survival, well, I think MM actually might be edging it out in 6.1, I'll have to check. But anyway, they're easy enough to play, which means that you can focus on doing other things and you can focus on the fight. And that's really what I enjoy the most. So to get back to Bumblebeast's question, no, it's not the hunter rotation that I find particularly exciting. And it's definitely not the spell visuals because... Well, they're not that amazing, and I suppose, yeah, the, the high numbers are fun, but really what I enjoy about playing a hunter is it kind of puts you in this position of being the, the sort of people who run off and solve problems within a raid fight, and I just find that to be a lot more fun. Plus, I suppose, you know, as much as I have been a little bit negative about parts of Warlords of Draenor, one of the things that I think Blizzard does do a fantastic job on is their encounter design, and I feel that when I'm dealing with those extra mechanics, I kind of get a bit more immersed in the encounter that Blizzard have created, and I think because of that, I do enjoy boss fights quite a bit more. Actually, I'd recommend, you know, if you're feeling comfortable with your class and your, you know, your raid leader is asking for someone to take up a role of responsibility, you know what? Put yourself forward. A, you'll look good, and B, you might find the fights a good bit more fun like that. Now, the next question is from Archlord Kaleth, who said, What do you think about sub-races in the game and... Um, you know, will they be put in, and how would I put them in? And that is a great question. Now, first of all, in case you're not aware, the idea of sub-races is basically, instead of just having a, say, a human, well, maybe you could play as, um, whatever, a Stormwind human or a, a Lordaeron human. That's a terrible example. Uh, let's go with the dwarves, right? Um, so maybe if you made a dwarf character, you could either be a Dark Iron Dwarf, so you get some of that Dark Iron stuff going, you could be the more traditional Bronzebeard Dwarf, or you could be one of the Wildhammer Dwarves, which I suppose maybe would give you a few cool little, like, racial tattoos and, and things like that. And I think, yeah, sub races absolutely should be in the game. And now that Blizzard have created the new models, I think it's really about time. And honestly, I'd say that's something that is on the horizon within the next one or two expansions. Blizzard actually said when they made the new models that because they've got a lot more to play with in terms of animations and rigging and the technicals like workflow and pipeline, that it should be easier to add additional customization options in the future, which means it should be easier to make various different sub-races. Now, of course, adding in a sub-race just for the sake of having one exist is maybe a little bit silly, but if they were to do sub-races, 
I think they could do some pretty cool things in terms of gameplay, or at least could have if it was in there from the start. I've got no idea how you would integrate this into a patch, but for an example, if you were to just uh, to take the dwarves, uh, maybe, you know, you could kind of wrap up with the Wildhammer clan. And I don't mean the Cataclysm reputation. I mean, you start off as a dwarf and you're interacting with the Wildhammer clan. Maybe that's a wrap. Maybe it's not. Probably not. Maybe it's just some unique subrace specific quest line. I think something like that would be really cool for the flavor and it could perhaps give some really, you know, nice rewards. So if you were a, um, a Wildhammer dwarf, maybe it could give you a unique griffin skin or maybe it could give you some unique... Um, cosmetic effects or a cool tattoo or something and I suppose there probably are plenty of different little sub races they could add I mean if uh, if you say consider the Draenei you could maybe have different schools of whatever priesthood so people who are particularly interested in one sort of Naru or, or something like that I don't know how much that fits into the lore but you know what I mean different sort of schools of Draenei in a way I mean with the trolls you could probably be different kinds of trolls I mean yeah, the Dark Spears are sort of, you know, they're originally, um, they were forest trolls that moved out of Stranglethorn Vale and all that stuff, but maybe another kind of troll could move in, and uh, maybe the Dark Spears are going to be kind accepting people. If uh, maybe you're you're talking about the orcs, well, there are different kinds of orcs um, in, in the lore. So, yeah, there's a way to put a sub-race in, I'd say, for most races in the game, and they could certainly add some cool little bits of flavor that I think would really be beneficial to the people who enjoy immersion, maybe who enjoy roleplay, and uh, just people who enjoy cool-looking shit. You don't have to enjoy roleplay to maybe want to unlock a badass tattoo for your Wildhammer Dwarf, because I, I think they're into that. I, I think they've got, like, pretty cool, like, face paint and war paint and stuff. So, yeah, I'd say sub-races should be there, and it would be lovely if they could integrate some sort of unique sub-race quest into the game rather than just them, um, you know, have it be a cosmetic only thing. That said, integrating a system like that at this stage would be pretty hard because what do we do with our existing characters? It's not like you're just going to walk into Ironforge and then select what kind of dwarf you are. So uh, maybe it's just a bit of a pipe dream, but I'd say at least for uh, additional new characters, yeah, sub races might be a thing in the future. Now, next, we've got an economy question from Burn3H, who said, on the topic of the WoW economy, do you think Blizzard will have to take some sort of serious step when it comes to the amount of gold flow that's in the game at the moment. And this really is, I think, a very pertinent time for this question. Warlords of Draenor has, I think, led definitely to hyperinflation. I mean, I made like 350k in two weeks. That's That was a lot of money to make in, in, in a few weeks if you think back to past expansions. I mean, it's as if we're you know, post-war Germany, who've just decided to just print all the money to pay our war debts. Print the money, yes. Well, inflation, pff, we've never heard of that. Print more money. And then you're at the stage where a loaf of bread's like a few bloody million marks, or whatever the hell it did cost back then. I'm loose with my history numbers, but whatever. That's kind of happening in the game right now. And one of the main reasons, I think, is... I, well, garrisons, honestly, I mean, we're generating loads of things, we're generating raw resources, we're generating, well, literally raw gold from our garrison missions, and then you've got the likes of, say, vendor runs for the old Cataclysm 25 Heroics, which actually generate quite a lot of money, and the question is, how do you balance all of this stuff? Because a lot of players still come into the game and find it hard to make money. If you just log in for your raid and just log off again, you're not going to earn that much money, which is a bit problematic when you think about it, because... It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of money that is, is there if you want to get it, and I suppose, yeah, engaging in the economy is a optional thing, but perhaps it's getting to the stage where the difference between the price of some things in the auction house is outpacing some players. Um, I, I, it's really hard to, to say where that should go. I mean, I, I don't think WoW has ever been at the stage where, say, the cost of an enchantment is a terrible, like, limiting factor. I mean, sure, maybe if you're not a rich player, you won't be able to purchase an expensive mount, but surely you'll be able to cover your gems and enchantments, whereas now we're at the stage where a lot of those things are very expensive. I mean, the lower tier enchantments and things, they're about 100 gold each. That's, in I think, roughly in line with how things have been in most expansions, but the expensive stuff's like upwards of a thousand. Maybe that's too much. So the economy is definitely in a little bit of a weird position. Now, there are multiple different ways a Blizzard can keep on going with this. The first one is make people pay you know, gold for more things. So increase the repair costs, increase all those random little incidental fees, and then also add new things to the game which cost gold. A great example of something like that happening in a patch is actually 6.1, the heirloom system. 
It costs thousands and thousands and thousands of gold to get a full set of level 100 heirlooms. So that's a pretty decent way of removing gold from the economy because that just goes into the vendor and that vendor is a black hole of gold. It disappears. So doing things like that, adding in more vendor mounts, etc, etc, etc. But um, that only really works so much. I think a lot of people just seem to hoard money for the sake of hoarding money. Kind of hard to really exactly like you know think about how that could go now of course the really radical root blizzard could do is just uh go all crazy you know and and just make a new currency so the new wow gold is worth a thousand of the old wow golds and then convert everyone and uh, just do a hard reset in the economy but frankly that would be absurd it would never happen it would be confusing to players and it's just not the sort of thing that i think would work in a game so overall what they should do is maybe cut down on the amount of free gold that they just generate and dole out to us that should definitely be just snipped down a little bit. I think it's a tad too high with the garrisons. And you know what? Maybe that 100% increase from the treasure hunter bonus, maybe that's just not needed because there's a lot of gold just going to be popping into existence out of nowhere. And I don't think they're really going to outpace that. So 6.1 will definitely be interesting on the economy front. Anyway, so in future expansions, less of that and, uh, you know, just more random little incidental fees. But you just want to make sure that also when the crafting system is being balanced and things like that, that uh, there's a decent volume when it comes to decent enchants and things like that, so that all players are never really limited by the economy. It's, it's very hard to balance all this stuff. Here's the thing with the economy, right? You've got so many different, I suppose, knobs that you can tweak, if you know what I mean. Little modifiers here and there, so the price of, uh, you know, how you balance professions for the price of, of different mats and the price of, say, enchantments and things. You can tweak uh, repair costs, you can tweak flight point costs, you can tweak mounts, you can tweak so many things. And each one has a very large effect on the economy. So, really, I'm not an economist, they're just some random thoughts, and it's not like they hold a lot of worth. I'm pretty sure if half the stuff I said was implemented, it would have some sort of unintent, um, unintentional just side effect that would ball something up. That's just the nature of economies. They're very hard to deal with. And on that note, maybe Blizzard have been falling to the same thing. I know that they don't have an economist. They've said so themselves. So perhaps it would be beneficial for them to even just on a contract basis, hire in an economist who is at least familiar with World of Warcraft to just give them some advice and maybe think a little bit about the economy. Now, certainly World of Warcraft is nothing like EVE Online, where in EVE they literally do have an economist on staff because that game is very, very based around the economy. World of Warcraft doesn't need that as much, but I think a bit of advice here and there might make a better space for um, for people. It's, it's really hard to, hard to say either way, but the economy can get kind of problematic. Now, I suppose one thing that is definitely worth mentioning is the idea of you trading in your in-game gold for a token that will give you subscription time. Now, of course, a player would purchase that token, then they could either right-click in that token to gain, say, 30 days of game time, or they could put it up on the auction house to sell it for gold. Basically, what EVE has got with its Plex system or Wildstar with its cred system. This is something that Blizzard did talk about. It didn't make it into patch 6.1, as we quite obviously at this stage know, but something like that could be really fascinating when it comes to the economy, and it could be that great balancing factor that many people would like. And essentially, here's what I mean. Right now, it's very easy if you're just a little bit smart to hoover up masses of gold. And it's not even if you're particularly smart, it's just if you have the inclination to pay attention to that sort of thing. And that really does make a very, very, very large wealth gap in World of Warcraft. Now, if the people with a lot of money could just pay for World of Warcraft via their in-game gold, then it does, I think, allow for a way for gold to be redistributed between more people. And that, in terms of the game design, I, I think could have a, a very beneficial effect. And of course, it's not like Blizzard would be making a you know stupid amount of money hand over fist, because ultimately they're just selling subscription time in a slightly different manner. So I think that could work, and I'm very interested to see if they do actually well, take the decision to implement that. It would be a very, very big change to the way World of Warcraft operates its subscription model. But anyway, that's really enough posturing from me. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comments, and I'll see you next time.